What's up guys? Let's talk about lead vocals. All right, something we home studio engineers always try to strive for is upfront lead vocals. I mean, we all want crisp, right in your face lead vocals that sit perfectly in our mixes. And I'm gonna give you tips on how you can achieve that. So before we even jump into the mixing aspect of lead vocals, I wanna to touch on three changes that will drastically increase the quality of your lead vocals. The first one being the distance between yourself and the microphone. So let's go ahead and take this microphone. I see so many people recording this far away from the microphone. That is something that you really don't wanna do. If you want upfront vocals, you wanna be this close. Like I literally tried to get all the way onto the microphone, like as close as I possibly can without hitting the microphone. So if you're singing or rapping this far away from the microphone, it's going to allow the room tone to hit the microphone before your voice does. So you can easily cancel that out by being this close to the microphone. The second change that will increase the quality of your vocals is by turning down the gain knob. I can't even start to count how many home studios I've been to where people had the gain knob on the interface either midway or all the way up. Nowadays, most condition microphones are sensitive enough where you only need to turn up that gain knob on your interface about 25% of the way. If you're recording and your microphone level is hitting that red, then you're clipping. And by that time, there's literally nothing you can do. Your vocals are just distorted at that point. So me, when I'm recording, I even try to prevent my vocals from hitting the yellow because like I said, you can always increase the gain on your DAW, but if your vocals are distorting, there's nothing you can do. The third change you can make is stop with the vocal boots. There's so many people that try to convert closets into vocal boots. They try to convert bathrooms. The truth is these spaces are way too small. When you're recording in a small room, your vocals have no room to breathe at all. Your voice is going to hit all of those walls like a million times and then hit your microphone causing flanging. And overall, your vocals are going to sound like they were recorded inside of a box. And I mean, that's not what we want, right? I mean, it's a good thing to stand in front of like a blanket baffle to deaden the vocals. Like I use packing blankets and they work extremely well, but small closets and bathrooms are going to do you way more harm than good. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into mixing these lead vocals. So the session that we're gonna be working out of today is a mashup that me and my friend Calissa Quinn did last week. If you haven't checked out the video, make sure you check it out because it came out really dope. I love recording Calissa because her vocals always comes out super clean. So let me go ahead and play this segment of the mashup, lead vocals only. You say you can live without me. Oh, why don't you dare? Yeah. All right, so let's go to Kalissa's lead track and see what we're working with. All right, so to start it off, we have a simple gain. I'm not even gonna go into that because it's pretty straightforward. The second plugin that I have is the CLA 2A. This is like my go-to compressor, like I said in my last video. I use other compressors, but pretty much, man, I love the simplicity of the CLA 2A. So um, let me go ahead and bypass all of the other plugins just so you can hear exactly what it's doing. You say you can live without me. Oh, and why aren't you dead yet? Why you so breathing? Why? And let me go ahead and bypass it so you can hear what it sounds like. You say you can live without me. Oh. Extremely low. <laughs> Why aren't you dead yet? Why are you so breathing? Why? So that compressor is really compressing those vocals because if you look at the waveform of the track, you see some peaks right here. All right, and some quiet parts. So that compressor really evens out those vocals, you know? And then of course, you can bring up the overall gain using the game knob right here. The second plugin that I always add is an equalizer. I'm rolling off at around 143 because she's a female singer, so she's not gonna have a lot of low end. If you look on the second band, I'm cutting out some of them low frequencies as well. Here on the fourth band, I'm adding some gain in the mids. 
on the third band, I'm cutting out some of them harsh frequencies that I heard in her voice. And on the sixth band, I'm adding a little bit of air. So what I'm gonna do is solo the third band so y'all can hear some of those frequencies that I'm cutting out. And one thing about equalization is you can start off with a basic template, like, you know, rolling off your low ends, bringing up the highs a little bit. But if you really want clean lead vocals, you have to play around and find, you know, the frequencies that don't need to be there. The best way to find frequencies that you could possibly cut is by pressing play and searching. I don't like that frequency, so I'm going to break it down. And that's how I do it. So the next plugin that I have is a simple DS to buy waves. Just to clean up some of them S's, when she says the word say, you'll see the DS are reacting. You say you can live without me. Oh. So that just cleans it up and makes those S's less harsh on the listener's ears. And after that, I always place a gate at the end of my vocal chains just to clean up some of that in between noise. And after that, I pretty much did the same thing with my vocals, aside from, you know, customizing the equalizer to fit my voice. So after you're done with your vocal chain, that's when you want to go ahead and dial in some reverb and some delay. Like I told y'all before, I'm using the H reverb by Waves because, like I said, I love this reverb. It's just super dope, man. It sounds so good. It sounds rich. And I'm also using H delay by waves and pretty much um i usually always have the ping pong on um i roll off some of the low end as well as some of the high end so you can have a nice mid-tone sounding delay and i i turn down the feedback because you really don't want it you know going through all of your vocals so you don't have to call, you don't gotta call. No, no. it's okay You know that joint sound good. You know that joint sound good right there. And there you have it. That's how I get all of my lead vocals to pop and to sit correctly in all of my mixes. If you guys have any questions or suggestions on topics that you want me to touch on next Tip Tuesday, comment below. And if you have any more tips on how you record and mix lead vocals, also comment below. Thumbs up this video if you found this Tip Tuesday helpful and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.